Let's take a look at identifying independent and dependent variables. The key with identifying independent and dependent variables is to think simply about this. What is in control once we determine what the variables are for a given situation? So what controls what? Well, let's take a look at this first one and see if we can't figure this out. First of all, we want to come up with what exactly are the things that could change in a situation. So, first one says, car insurance costs increase with traffic violations and accidents. Well, what do we have for variables? In other words, what things can change? Well, we have the car insurance costs. Those could change. In fact, it says they increase with traffic violations and accidents. Well, what's the other thing that we would need to know? We'd need to know how many traffic violations and accidents there were. Okay, so what controls what? Well, do the number of traffic violations and accidents control the costs? Or do the costs control how many traffic violations and accidents you've had? Well, there might be some slight uh, control if your costs are very high to not have traffic violations or accidents, but I think that it's pretty clear that the number of traffic violations and accidents would control our car insurance costs. So that's in control. So first thing I want to say that brings that one up is or that comes up with that one is don't overthink it. Sometimes we can kind of convince ourselves of either way in some of these situations, but don't overthink it. Think about what you would need to know to determine the other one. So again, independent, number of violations and accidents. The dependent is the cost of the insurance. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Ice cream sales increase as the temperature increases. Okay, so what do we have for variables? Well, we have ice cream sales and we have the temperature. All right, so what controls what? What's in charge here? Well, let's see. Do the ice cream sales control what the temperature is outside? Or does the temperature outside control the ice cream sales? Well, it seems to me that when it's warmer, and this is kind of what it says, when it's the sales increase when it's warmer, so being warmer is going to be in control, and that is our independent variable. That means the increased sales or the sales must be the dependent variable. Okay, now this next one. Here we have it says Will charges $25 per hour to fix your computer. Now, don't be thrown off by that $25 per hour. The key it, to remember here when we're identifying independent and dependent variables is that we want variables. We want things that could possibly change. Well, does the $25 per hour change? No. Uh, what could we figure out if we know that he charges $25 per hour? Well, we could figure out how much he's going to charge us. Okay, well, what do I need to know in order to figure out how much he's going to charge us? If I know he charges $25 per hour, well, I need to know how many hours he worked. Okay, so what's in control? Are the overall charges in control? Or are the number of hours that he worked in control? Well, which would we need to find the other one? We would need the number of hours that he worked to determine the total cost for fixing the computer. So the number of hours in this case will be the independent variable and the dependent variable is going to be what the charges are. Okay, let's look at this last one. States with a larger population have more seats in the House of Representatives. Alright, so what do we have for variables? Well, we've got population and the seats in the House of Representatives. Now we need to think about what controls what. So does the population determine how many seats they have? Or does the number of seats they have in the government 
determine how many people live in that state. Hmm. Well, I think it's pretty clear that the population determines the number of seats. So the population will be our independent variable, and the number of representatives, the number of seats, would be the dependent variable. So identifying independent and dependent variables, my first tip again to you is don't overthink it. Sometimes you can convince yourself that uh, it might be something that it probably isn't. Secondly, make sure you're choosing a variable. Okay, 25, sometimes I see that when there's a number, I see students want to pick that as the independent or dependent variable. The problem with that is a number is not a variable. It doesn't change. Remember, the, the word variable means to change. A uh, number is constant. It does not change. And finally, we look for what's in control. What determines what? So you can think through the situation, and off you go. I hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.